Hello, hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your March 2019 overview reading. This is good for you if you are a sun, moon, or rising Sagittarius. And while I'm throwing these cards down, just go ahead, get center, focus on taking a couple deep breaths into the diaphragm. Notice anything that wants to come up today or set your intention for what you'd like to be revealed during this reading. I will also let you know that I am gearing this reading towards being kind of like a spring theme. Um, like about what's growing, what's abundant, you know, all of that good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'm going to throw these cards down and then we will get started. All right, let's get started with this truth bomb for you. Exceptions are made, make them ask for them. So if you're thinking that you're limited, especially if you're operating within a specific institution or if you think, no, there's no way they're going to do that, remember that the exceptions exist for a reason and don't rule yourself out when it comes to having an exception happen for you. They happen all the time. So it, it just seems like you want to ask and you also want to be open to the possibility of you having an exceptional situation in present time. Then we have Elixir. So it's all about focusing on what exactly are you building? What are you concocting? What recipe are you putting together for yourself at this time? It's really important to consider what recipe you have going on because that is going to dictate what manifests more than anything else. It's kind of like what you're cultivating through your thoughts, words, and actions. That's what ultimately makes up an elixir. So every step that you take is working towards something, whether it be good or bad. So you may as well be intentional with it. And then the animal card for you is Cobra. So needing a little bit of patience is coming up. When I see this card, every time it shows up, all I can think about is how they kind of like hover. You know how the Cobra will just wait and wait and wait before they strike. And so that's kind of what you're having to deal with. And I don't think it's like if you have an idea and you can act on it any day, you should do that. But this is saying if there's, you might be waiting for a manifestation to show up or something else that you do need to be patient with. And when that opportunity comes up, then you strike. So it, it's about timing. But if you this is something that's going on in your own head, then it's probably just a limiting barrier and an obstacle you're creating for yourself rather than something that's legit. So just... Just remember that your brain is going to try to say, no, no, not now. T right now isn't the right time. No, you should wait. No, no, no. It's going to hold you back, but you can't guarantee the future. So if you want something, you got to get at it now. And then we have catharsis. Feel your feelings before you try to move forward. The solution may be emotional rather than logical. A messy situation may be an important healing in disguise. I love that last one because it's so true. And whichever phrase came up as being uh, the most impactful is your intuition. So trust that. Now let's get into the reading. I'm just starting out with typical central energy crossing with shifting out what's oncoming. So this is the central energy for you. We have the four of wands focusing on home. This is actually reminding me of the catharsis card as far as it being focused on feeling. And this is definitely a feely card. So spending time at home, spending time with people that you care about, focusing on taking good care of yourself is important. It looks like this is going to bolster all of the other things that you have going on. So make sure you prioritize that. The crossing energy for you is the tower. So release and liberation is already here. So that's the one good thing that you have to... Um, look at is that this is something that's already happening. It's not oncoming. So 
Like I would, I would much rather have the tower as the crossing energy than over here. So it's kind of like whatever you're unearthing, whatever it is that's being shed, whatever is shifting out of alignment with you is already in the works. So you don't have to worry about um, like turbulence ahead. More than likely turbulence is either current or already happened. And so things are going to uh, move and start smoothing out. I'll get more context for you. Just know that this is an organic part of death and rebirth cycles. And I think that that needs to be normalized because your entire body is going through death and rebirth cycles every single day. Think about every single cell that dies and all of the cells that are reborn in your body every single day. So this is a this is something that you really can embrace for yourself and use it to your advantage. And that's why the elixir card is coming up. What you have shifting out is the five of wands. I love this card so much. It's all about problem solving and seeing through what you currently have going on and being able to to construct something better than you thought possible. And this is the problem solver card. So I think maybe you identify the problem and part of grounding yourself and releasing what needs to be released is how you solve that problem. So whatever it is that you're like, all right, I need to let this go. It needs to be done. I need to cut it off. That is where the solution lives. And so I think you kind of came to that revelation. And now it looks like the tower is actually something you are deciding to do or have already decided to do. It's not something that is like you getting swept off your feet. I don't actually even think that you know, the universe needs to do it for you. It's more like, I think you probably came to this conclusion mentally on your own. The oncoming energy, what is to come? King of Pentacles, stability. So whatever you've cut out and released is leading to greater stability for your future. This is also encouraging you to focus on long-term plans and keeping all of those in mind as you work through this. So it's, like I said, things are smoothing out, not getting worse. And that's the, the beautiful thing. I shouldn't say that with quite as much conviction because ultimately it depends on where you're at. Like if you, if you truly believe that, because if you don't believe it, then it won't happen. And that's just kind of the way brains work. So that's, that's the whole thing. If, if you think this is hogwash, then well than it is. <laughs> so this is just uh, really encouraging you to look at your own ability to ground yourself, to align yourself to what feels best, right, and true for you, and trust the decisions that you're making in that direction. Now, this is advice for whatever you're manifesting. So money, partnership, new job. This is advice on how to get that. Ace of Cups, fill your tank. Fill your tank. If you're running on empty, you're going to have a hard time manifesting. And that's what people forget is that it's so energetic that if you're giving all of your energy to something else or some other crisis or whatever, then you're not giving any energy to the manifestation and to the creation of that. And the only way you can replenish or find energy to pour into a manifestation is for you to refill it yourself. And so... Like, let's say you're strapped on time, you're just stuffed to the gills with stuff to do. Then I would say that's even more of a reason for you to make time to replenish your energy. Make time for a bath, make time to meditate, make time to relax. You have to be the one to kind of put boundaries around making time for yourself. And when you do that and you get serious about that, you're going to find yourself being able to access more energy and therefore give it to the activities that are going to result in you manifesting the thing that you desire. External influences and environment, nine of wands. So it's kind of like things are moving at such a fast pace and a high speed. You might feel a little bit unstable. Like I said, being overworked or if you actually have, if you say something like, I don't have time to meditate, then meditate twice. 
it's that whole principle. It's like, well, if you're saying you don't have time, then you should actually be giving time to mani uh, meditating, manifestation, something for yourself, because it's like acting out of scarcity is what will put you in a bad position to begin with. I am going to clarify the Nine of Wands. Ten of Cups. So it's it's like you're heading in the right direction. You're getting to the fruits of your labor. You're it's like things are going probably really really well. It's just that the pace is going to feel a little bit chaotic. It, it might feel like a hodgepodge. It might feel like you just have to plan one day at a time. And it because if you look at this card, you can see it's getting a little hairy, you know, trying to keep everything balanced and keep everything moving the way it needs to. And that's okay. It, it happens. You just want to remember that things are going better than you're probably seeing them go. <laughs> it's kind of like, don't, we want to be careful trusting our lens if we know that our lens has been shaped by pre previous experiences in a negative way. So just watch yourself on that and make sure you're giving to yourself. What is growing for you in March? Justice, balanced thinking, Deeper alignment with yourself, your needs, your wants, your desires. I'm going to clarify this as well. Queen of Swords. So this is just having ownership over your thoughts, ideas, and beliefs. I think that's getting more and more ingrained this month. Like you just being able to sit with yourself, with your ideas, and and pour energy into that. So it looks like if if all goes well, if you are really taking aligned action, you can actually find a way to really stabilize your environment um, just through your own presence and your own ability to kind of ground yourself, give to yourself. That's what facilitates an experience of being grounded is really being able to cultivate that within yourself. And it all starts with your perception and your mind. So master the mind and everything else can fall into place, but it really requires you to do some mindset work. That would be like my top recommendation to support this because it looks like if you're pouring into, I'm going to adjust my mindset, adjust my mindset, and you do that work, it's going to have major payoff. Uh, but it does it, it does take time to grow. So just allow yourself to own that and you're gonna find that you have you're just reaching your potential even more. What is abundant? So what do you have access to a lot of this month? Seven of Swords. I'm gonna clarify this one. The moon. Um, similar to the tower being the crossing energy, it's kind of like it, less is more this month. It's not about taking on every project or saying yes to everything or doing everything or whatever. This is about what you're decluttering, what you're removing, what you're getting rid of. That's going to be way more important and pack more of a punch for you. And so the abundance could be in the capacity and wherewithal to execute on the things that you need to get rid of, declutter, um, or step away from. And the moon is like your intuitive guidance around what needs to be walked away from. And again, this is this is something that kind of floats up into the conscious mind. But once you once you access that, the, the the feeling state that really is your intuition at its core um, coming from a space of neutrality. That's what's going to help you and what you have abundant access to this month. It just is really going to support the long term stability and being grounded. And that's I think that's what is being constructed is just finding home within yourself. 
and the Four of Wands is a testament to that. Everything that you have going on surrounding this is all about finding home within you. And that is, it's setting you up for a lot of long-term success through doing that. All right, let's get into the timeline. As you guys know, unless you're new to my channel, in which case, hello, we have first, second, third, and fourth quarter. So that'll be where you end up at the end of March. But let's get started. This is where you are at the beginning of the month. We have the Eight of Pentacles. So it takes work. It takes applying yourself. And as much as I wish things could come to life purely through spiritual tools and just sitting in a room and, and meditating and wishing that could solve every problem. It can't. It requires action to be taken. And that's what is really being highlighted at the beginning of the month, is the actions that you take are going to have the best or the biggest effect on what it is that you have going on. So take action, get it done, do it now, make it happen, best possible situation or best position to put yourself in. Uh, second quarter, six of pentacles, reciprocity, give and take, focus on reciprocation, especially in relationships. Um, remember, if you, you want to be cautious with resentment, that's what's coming up with this card. You know, try to keep it balanced. Like, only give if you're very confident in your ability to give without expectation. If you, it needs to be reciprocal, then make sure you set boundaries ahead of time. The worst thing you can do is give when you expect. If you expect, you know, something to come of it and then that person doesn't deliver, you're you're actually doing yourself a disservice. It's not the person's, it, it's not actually their problem. So you want to be really clear about that as you, as you're in this space. And so I would just be mindful of where you're putting your energy. Third quarter, Ten of Pentacles, all stability, that's what you're working towards. And it's through the habits now that is, that's contributing to the foundation of the long term. Like with the Six of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles is so important for long term satisfaction and success. Without reciprocity, you cannot really dig into personal fulfillment because things do need to be balanced in some capacity and you need to do the work like all of that is contributing to the long term and I think you start to see how the decisions now contribute to the big picture wrapping up the month of March we have the ace of pentacles this is opportunities popping up for you through the work that you're doing. So you want to start setting the stage now for yourself when it comes to the Ace of Pentacles or uh, when it comes to your manifestations because the Ace of Pentacles is showing a delivery, but you want to place your order and start taking action on that in the beginning of March. And by the end of the month, you're going to be able to see a lot of the benefits shine through in whatever, in whatever way they want to appear. Now we're going to do a three card pick. So go ahead, pay attention to either the card that's calling to you, or if you have a question, you can ask that now. Oop, I'll take that. That's the one wanted to come out. <sighs> go ahead, card one, two, or three. Or you can, you can pick however many you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, card number one, ten of pentacles. All right. And for those of you that are like, where's the 10th pentacle? It's right there in the center. Um, so this is the same as right here. And it's all foundation. So you are going to be served better if you focus on the long term. Take action in present that contributes to the long term. That's the best track for you to stay on this month um, or with whatever you're asking about. You have to think long term. Do not make decisions based on short term, like impulsive bursts. That is not going to serve you well, particularly in March. As you're making decisions and setting yourself up, it's like really focus on the long term. Um, I'm getting a special <laughs> intuitive hit when it comes to relationships. Like, if you're making decisions around relationships, if nothing were to change ever in the current relationship, the way things are, would you be okay with that? 
Like the, that type of mentality is what you want to consider in all contexts, including jobs and things like that. You have to think long term you, and you also want to go into it without any um, modifications, like not looking at something's, pot uh, something's potential, but instead looking at what is. Card number two, we have the Five of Pentacles, disappointment, frustration, What? where are your expectations at? This is pointing to some unmet expectations. So watch yourself because this is, this is avoidable, but you have to be clear about what you expect from other people and you have to communicate that. Otherwise, don't have expectations. So it's just about how you set yourself up when it comes to what your expectations are and who you're communicating those to. Be careful with, um, you just don't want to set yourself up for failure by expecting a whole bunch and not communicating it or not working towards it. Card number three, we have the Mother of Swords. This is the Queen of Swords in a normal deck. So mastery of mind. So for you, the trick is mindset. It's through making those adjustments to the lens that you're working with. That seems to be most important. So down here in this area, because um, we have Queen of Swords right here, as well as the Justice card, this is like the hot zone for you as far as what's growing and what needs to be taken. It, most of your attention needs to be on your lens. So focus on figuring out what your origin story is, what is working for you, what's not working for you, what is your truth, what's not your truth. And that is how you can really get an edge in March and it's going to serve you really well. All right, my Sagittarian friends, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this reading as much as I've enjoyed reading for you. And don't forget, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, all of the links are in the description box. I love working with you. It is such an honor being able to hold space for each and every one of you that works with me. And if you want monthly love readings, don't forget they come out on the first of every month on my Patreon. And I also do weekly signed specific readings, so check that out in the description box. And until next time, have a lovely March and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.